Attack Poverty is a global organization that serves locally. Our vision is empower people to attack poverty in their life and community. We do that through strengthening under-resourced community through spiritual growth, education, revitalization, and basic needs. So in 2011, we officially became a 501c3. So we're really only nine years old as an organization. And in the last nine years, we've um, collectively impacted 317,000 people. And so we're really grateful to be here in in, the, in this city, in Stafford. We have a, a warehouse in the back. We have a great meeting space. We have office space for our staff. We're able to uh, utilize this as a headquarters. It's a great uh, location between Houston and Fort Bend County. So it's a, really good for our staff to come together um, and, and collaborate with one another across all of our locations in the Houston area. And recently we did one of our largest uh, food distributions right there in the parking lot at Stafford High School. Uh, we had Wingstop. We had all of the, you know, um, uh, the Houston Food Bank was there. We were able to utilize the the uh, Stafford Police. They were so great. Uh, Stafford Police just did a phenomenal job of helping us direct traffic and getting people through there in a fluid fashion. And so it was just beautiful to see the community come together. So in March, when this thing hit, and we were on spring break, and we thought, oh, we'll be out a couple of weeks. It didn't matter to us what the time frame was. What mattered to us were the needs of individuals within the communities we serve. Because we had to shut down all of our programs. We have... And in all of our centers, we had after-school programs going. We we have adult education classes. We had to shut those things down, and we had to say, okay, just for a minute, let's push pause. Let's really evaluate the situation. So we 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 listened, and then we were able to pivot our entire organization. And so within a matter of a few hours, and and then in just a couple of days, all of our resource centers and locations became distribution points, and we mobilized. A lot of our partners to jump on calls in order to to really facilitate what is the best way to meet people where they are instead of asking a bunch of people because this is a different thing than a, a natural disaster where people could flock to one location. We need to keep crowds small. We need to think about our health concerns, and we still do. We had a um, a five k, ten k, and kid k. It's called the Run to Attack Poverty. We had that planned in April. You know, we couldn't gather even now in August, and so. What we've done is just this past weekend and all through this next week, individuals are running virtually. They're running on their own. They've signed up. We've had hundreds of people sign up. And so it's kind of fun, but at the same time, it's kind of like, what's happening? What are we doing? So, you know, we're, we're really having to figure out what does this new normal mean for, for gathering, uh, for, for celebration, for mobilizing people to get into action. So it's been amazing to see people come together from all places and walks of life to really try to lean in and go, hey, how can we support one another through this pandemic, through this crisis, through all of the challenges coming up with school? How, you know, it's like neighbors taking care of neighbors, walking with one another. And that's just it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. The collaboration is just so high. We're just honored to be in the midst of it, quite honestly, because we're learning so much, but we're also able to um, collaborate so well that actually we get more done. We're going to attack poverty. We're going to address these things, and we're going to see people transformed in the process. And so come along with us to do it.